Hello, my name is Dr. James Shamia. I'm a pulmonary and critical care physician and also Senior Vice President and Chief Operating Officer at the University of Tennessee Medical Center. It's been about two weeks since we last updated you about the COVID-19 situation from a hospital perspective. There certainly have been developments since that time and it definitely appears to be related to the Omicron variant. So today we'll provide another brief update. This slide shows hospitalization data across the East Tennessee region. The region is defined as the counties at the bottom of the slide, and it shows the number of patients in all the hospitals across those counties each day. The purple line shows that about two weeks ago when I updated you, the hospitalizations were at 217. And then as of January 4th, that number has increased to 314. So the rate of increase has definitely accelerated. We're gonna be watching to see if that total hospitalization number uh, continues to rise and does it get close to the peak that we had back in September. This next slide is our hospital and when I last reported to you we had 52 patients in the hospital that's now increased to 77. If you look at the graph on the right you'll actually see that we we dropped for a period of days and then really fairly quickly increased. So we've been getting a lot of questions about the relationship between boosters and hospitalizations and we have a little bit of data now. So this is data from our hospital since November 22nd, and I'll walk you through it. First of all, the red bar are those patients who've been hospitalized who had not received any dose of COVID vaccine, and it's about 73% of the hospitalizations. Then about 2.9% had started a two-dose series but not finished it. About 20% had completed a full primary vaccine series but had not been boosted, and another 4.4% had been boosted. Now remember that a lot of these patients still did have other comorbidities, or uh, meaning other medical problems that predisposed them to being in the hospital. But what this shows is that still the vast majority of patients in the hospital had not received any vaccine dose. And it also shows that the percentage of those hospitalizations who've been boosted is quite low. Chances are we all know at least one person right now who has COVID-19. So I wanted to show a few slides that really will demonstrate the rate of diagnosis. So this is the percent of positive tests. So of all the tests that are run for COVID-19, how many of those are positive? And on the right-hand side, you see there's been an abrupt increase just in the last several days. And on the most recent day, up to 35% of all tests sent were positive. This was the true indicator that the Omicron variant had become the dominant variant in our community. This is similar in that it shows the number of new cases each day in Knox County. And again, on the right-hand side, you see just how much of an increase there has been. I'm gonna be watching very closely to the extent that the right-hand side exceeds the number of cases we were diagnosing in September. Because even though it may be that fewer patients with Omicron end up in the hospital than Delta patients, uh, if more total people are infected, then that can still lead to a very significant number of hospitalizations. It's also important to note this time around that many patients are taking home tests, and those home tests typically will not end up in this data. So let's spend just a moment talking about treatment. For many, Omicron will be a mild upper respiratory illness requiring only supportive treatment. There are a few outpatient treatments, but the supply of all three medications is limited. First of all, there are two oral medications, both are twice daily for five days. Currently, they're only potentially available at select Walmart pharmacies. And I say potentially because on any given day, they may or may not have supply. So prescription for one of the oral medications will not necessarily guarantee access. It will depend on supply. These medications have interactions with other medications and providers are just now familiarizing themselves with them. There is Sotrovimab, which is a newer monoclonal antibody that has activity against Omicron. But the important thing to realize is due to limited supply, all therapies are currently intended to be reserved for those at highest risk for poor outcomes. So clearly the COVID-19 situation has changed over the last few weeks. Omicron is new and in many ways it's different and we're still learning about it. And so we're going to be watching the case rates and hospitalization rates very closely over the next two weeks so we can try to determine to what extent the hospital system may experience strain. In addition, just like the airline industry, as you can imagine, hospitals have team members who also contract COVID-19. 
and we have to follow the CDC guidance that's provided to us about when those people can return to the hospital. So there's definitely some staffing strain as well. So what are some next steps for the community? First of all, regardless of your vaccination status, it's a good time to renew mask wearing. Also remember that breakthrough cases after vaccine and even after the booster are not considered vaccine failures. Vaccination and particularly boosters provide protection against severe illness. We recommend that everyone get their flu vaccine. When I last reported to you, we reported out that we'd had 20 patients hospitalized at our hospital with the flu since November 13th. Since that time, there's been an additional 35. And last year, we really didn't see any influenza hospitalizations. So it's important to get that flu vaccine, important to get the initial COVID-19 vaccine if you have not, Restimulate immunity with COVID-19 boosters. If you have symptoms, get a COVID test. And then also I should draw your attention to their new isolation and quarantine guidelines from the CDC, which can be found on their website. Uh, so some of the prior rules about isolation and quarantine have been modified. And so if you're not sure what to do, this link, this website really takes it step by step. So as always, we appreciate your time and attention today and we'll provide more COVID-19 updates as the situation warrants. Thank you.